Welcome to the Builders of Authority podcast, a show committed to helping you build authority for your brand. In the realm of business and personal branding, authority stands as a cornerstone. Authority isn't built overnight, it's built over time. So join us as we build something remarkable together. And now, here's your host, Adam McChesney. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Builders of Authority podcast. Our title sponsor for the Builders of Authority podcast is Go High Level, also known as GHL. GHL is the first ever all-in-one platform that will give you the tools, support, and resources you need to succeed and crush your marketing goals. Personally, I have used this software since 2020, and it's been a game changer for my business and our clients. If you are looking to level up your CRM and marketing game, then this is the platform to use. You can find a link for a free and extended 30-day trial with tons of Builders of Authority bonuses in the show notes. So Take advantage of the opportunity to adopt this amazing software and grow your business. Today, I'm joined by someone I've been connected to online for a few years now. We are both in a group called the Arte Syndicate. After years of us both being in St. Louis and in digital marketing, we finally got together for a launch a few months back to after he reached out. I'm really glad that we did. We had a great conversation. He is definitely one of the real ones, not just in the digital marketing, but the online and entrepreneurial space, which is really hard to find these days. I'm glad we got connected on a deeper level and more excited for today's episode. My guest today is is Chance Weber. Chance, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me, man. Excited to be here. No, it's a uh, it's definitely something that we should have done a long time ago, but here we are. <laughs> we're, way, we're way overdue, man. Yeah, way, way overdue. overdue. Tell people a little bit about who Chance is. Yeah, man. So um, you know, I, I think that most people at this point know me for being a digital marketer. Um, so I've been in the game for 13 years now long time. and, uh, yeah, man, a long, long time. It's been a long time. It's funny. Like I come from the days in Google where you could literally write a press release and rank any keyword on a nationwide level in like two weeks. Yeah. And now, man, like that just sinks you. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm from the days of Google's algorithm having like five ranking factors instead of the 5,000 that it has now. Um, but yeah, so I, I love entrepreneurship. I love business. Uh, I, I truly, that's just, I think that's one thing that's really differentiated us and our growth is I feel like so many marketing agencies in general, they talk about a bunch of shit that nobody cares about, <laughs> right? Like, Hey man, this click through rate looks great, mm -hmm. man. 99% uh, of businesses could care less about their click through rate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our approach has always been take a very business approach. Like, Hey, you spent a thousand dollars. How much did we actually make? and really getting deep into data analytics and attribution more than anything else. Like, yeah. There's not a business owner out there that cares if they get 100,000 leads mm -hmm. if they don't make a single sale, Yeah. right? So it, our approach has always been that. It's like, I don't talk about marketing, I talk about their business. And mm -hmm. that's one thing that I think has really separated us in general is, do I have a team of the geek squad that lives, eats, sleeps, and breathes this stuff? Of course, mm -hmm. but my approach is, what is this going to do to your business and where is your business financially? And it's not like I'm looking at their P and L's, but do we have the capital to do this the right way? Cause I won't do it any way other than the right way. Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, I've, I've just, I've been super blessed. It's been a long journey. Uh, started this company with a $15,000 loan from my mommy and daddy. <laughs> um, at that time I had like a 480 credit score. I'd had a car repossessed. I was at like rock bottom, in life and mm -hmm. really didn't have anything to lose and everything to gain, which is a powerful place to be. A lot yeah. of people don't understand that. Like they think rock bottoms is hellhole, and it is, mm -hmm. but when you have nothing to lose, it's a lot easier to gamble. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah, man, I started this company and you know, we did a million dollars in revenue our first full year in business. So it grew very quickly wow. and um, we've just continued to, to grow since then. And you know, now at this point, our referrals are so strong that you know, we don't even have to really do much marketing anymore. It's it's um, I, like my pipeline is consistently full with just referrals, which is a beautiful thing. But, you know, I'm sure we can talk about this at some point. But that's the next step for me in 2025 is I got to start to scale this thing mm -hmm. um, to, to another level beyond where we're at. Yeah. Well, I, I, I really appreciate kind of your outlook on the, the how digital marketers can actually change the industry by looking at the from the business side. And that's what like, I think which allowed me to have a lot of success as well, because I own other businesses, I came from medical device sales. So I wasn't like the, hey, let's go figure out how we can turn these analytics into some report that makes it look like we're doing something, it's going to end up catching up to you at some point. And so why do you think most marketers don't take that approach? I think that most marketers aren't good business people. 
Very true. Man, I, I'm just <laughs> be honest with you. Yeah. Like, I don't think I, I've been blessed with the fact that I love the game of business. Mm -hmm. Like, I I geek out. I can't like my PL. I've been dealing with my accountant all day. It's August eighth. I'm 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 ready for July's numbers. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see the numbers. I, I and I go through every single line item in that P and L every month because I love business. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly trying to figure out where I'm wasting money, where I'm being inefficient, um, what my next move is going to be. Like I truly geek out on business. So when I talk to prospective clients or clients. I truly, like, they can feel my passion. If I could tell you, if I had a dollar for every time somebody said, man, I can just feel your passion, like, when you're mm -hmm. talking about this in my business, well, I, that's not a show. Like, that's just me, yeah. you know? Um, but I, I think to answer your question, I think a lot of marketers are a couple different things. Number one, they're shitty business people. Yeah. So if you're a shitty business person, how can you talk to somebody about their business? Mm -hmm. um, I also think in the marketing world, you have a lot of what I would call, like, creatives. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. They're people that can make things that look amazing. Yeah. Um, they have creative minds. They might be good from the creative side of the table. But when it actually comes down to execution, evaluation, and digging into that side of it, uh, they really lack that and struggle. But at the end of the day, does the entrepreneur care about how pretty something is or do they care about how well it performs? Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. So I'm, I can't, man, I can't even draw a good stick figure, yeah. let alone, <laughs> do I have marketing ideas? Yeah, man, constantly. Like that's, that's like my superpower. I love to think about a business and figure out how we can market it or what we can pitch or what ad we can run. I love that stuff strategy wise. But as far as like making something look good, Man, I, I'm not your guy. Yeah. But I'm more relatable, I think, to our clients than people that are on the other side of that spectrum, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so how did you grow it from the beginning, right? So you mentioned like, hey, I started this thing. Were you doing all the work? And then you're yeah. like, you're like, hey, no, I got to delegate this stuff. Like, yeah, talk, talk to me a little bit about that growth. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't know because my company was kind of non-existent back then. And I had zero brand. The mm -hmm. company, I mean, I still don't think my business has enough of a brand. I am the brand, which is a problem. 2025 mm -hmm. mission. Start <laughs> to change that. But um, I had a business partner when I started the company. And um, it was very ugly from day one. Hmm. Um, I found that I was working 15-hour days and he was working six-hour days. And um, was a friend of 15 years. Hmm. Ended very, very ugly uh, at a closing in 2017. Hmm. Um, like, so ugly that um, I almost beat the shit out of him at the closing table. And I'm not that guy. Yeah. Um, but it was that ugly and that uh, it, it was a divorce. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a business partnership is the same as a marriage. Yeah. It really is. Some people could make an argument that it's harder. Yeah. Um, I think kids maybe bring that more equal. But yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah man. Uh, so it was really ugly. And then the second that I got rid of him, the company really just exploded. We changed models. We changed systems. But yeah, man, I used to do all the work. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell I tell everybody I talk to now, like, I had a, a, a client, it was a pr prospective client. I, actually, I think that guy has signed the contract since. But this was like two weeks ago. He's like, hey, man, I don't want your team. I want you. And I'm like, I'm so thankful that you said that to me, but I can 110% assure you that you don't want me. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, why don't I want you? I'm like, honestly, man, I haven't logged into a Google Ads account in at least six, seven years. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't, the platforms have changed so much. Like I don't touch anything anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm a strategy guy. I run my company. I have levels of management within my company that oversee my account managers that handle things. But like, I have a bunch of people that work for me that have advanced degrees. I'm a college dropout. <laughs> like I, when people say like hire people that are smarter than you, yeah. that's what I have. Yeah. And I, I truly do like people do not, my clients do not want me to run their <laughs> stuff. They want my team to run it. So, yeah. but yeah, I used to do everything on my own. Yeah. I used to live in it all day long. Um, and that was just part of learning growing pains. Like I couldn't grow the business if I was making bid adjustments in a Google ads account. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was a process, you know, from the first team member to where we're at now. It's just, it's a, it's a process. And how many team members do you guys have now? We're 13 right wow. now. Yeah. That's incredible. Yep. And we're, we're pretty lean for... I was going to say that's the a, amount that's of lame. revenue yeah. that we do, but you know, man, I've got, I've got, you know, a couple people on my team making, a, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Like, yeah. so it's not like, I don't have your normal agency, 22, three, four or five year old kid that's making 55 grand. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I, I do have one of those people, but like, I, that's not, that's not what my team is. Yeah. So, you know, you got to pay for that talent. And uh, my right hand gal who I actually loaned um, half a million dollars to, 
about a year and a half ago, interest free to buy into profit sharing within the company. Um, she's been with me since she was an intern. And when I say like this, this gal is smarter than me, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it's an understatement. Yeah. Like mom and dad were in the military, like flew missiles, some crazy stuff. I don't even know what all it is, yeah. but you know, she got an MBA for fun. Um, she's just an absolute beast and a workhorse and she's brilliant. Yeah. And you know, when you get somebody like that, you have to make sure that they can go look somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they're going to know, like, this isn't going to get better. And I try to provide a culture and a compensation, you know, arrangement that makes her never leave. And she has a very long non-compete, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old uh, golden handcuffs. Yeah, the old golden handcuffs. Well, and, and I think, like, you you hit the nail on the head right there is – or the head and the nail right there is hire people that are smarter than you. Yeah. Um, but I, I, the reason why I asked if you started out, which I knew that you likely did start out doing all the work, is because I think that's one of the issues with marketing stuff, too, is people will literally start an agency, and, and then they just start selling, and then they white label it they to white somebody, label it. somebody yeah. else. And that was, like, my biggest pet peeve. And I've used white label companies way long ago when I was in the phase of I had 30 clients, and I didn't know what to do yeah. before I ended up having my own team. But, like, I built 200 websites before I ever even sold one. And so I – think that that also propelled your success, which propelled my success as well as like, we can talk the the nerd stuff if we yeah, need to. Sure. We can be dangerous if we need to, but we know that we're going to reach our own capacity if we don't bring on other A players that it's like, that's their thing. I think that's the key for every business, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it really is like, it, it truly is. And that's why, again, I try to have a culture um, and benefits and, you know, like my, my people have unlimited paid time off. They do what they want to do when they want to do it. I have time tracking on everything, which quite frankly, I never look at. Mm -hmm. I look at the monthly summary just to make sure we're not getting our ass kicked on a client where mm -hmm. I need to like go, Hey, you know, we have eight hours allocated to this account this month and you mm -hmm. spent 18, like what's going on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's justifiable, but mm -hmm. we have time tracking. It's not to be like a warden overlooking every minute what they, that's not the point at all. It's just, it's to make sure I'm profitable on every account that we have. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Um, but you know, like there's accountability from that perspective. If I did need to look at it through that lens to say, Hey, like you're not holding your weight. Mm -hmm. oh, I have that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, like we have unlimited pay time off, you know, all, all benefits, um, mandatory work from day home every month. To me, everybody needs an oil change, doctor appointment, dentist appointment. Like there's something every month. Like I want you to go do what you need to do and take that 2 PM slot that nobody else can. Cause they're in their nine to five and, and go do it. Yeah. So you know, that's been just the, some of the things that, like, we try to put in place. We have quarterly outings. We do something every month. I buy lunch every Friday. Mm -hmm. We have full-blown cold brew coffee machines, everything in our office. Like, anything anybody wants, basically, I give it to them. Because <laughs> yeah. um, awesome. I try to make people happy. You yeah. know, I think that's a big piece of it. Yeah, that's awesome. So talk to me a little bit about, you mentioned, yeah, it's, everybody kind of knows Chans as yeah. the company. Because I try. I struggled with that for two straight years yeah. as we were growing, and it, like, almost wrecked me. How how have you navigated that? I haven't. If I'm being completely honest with you, I haven't. I think that we probably have old clients that don't even know the company they worked with. They just yeah. know me. Yeah. You know? And I – um I haven't. So it's a big, it's a big objective. This has actually been planned since 2023 that in 2025, I have to make this, take this next big step mm -hmm. and start to build a company brand. Cause yeah. eventually, I don't know what the, maybe, you know, I don't know what the statistic is of how many like small businesses are not exitable. Like mm -hmm. they can't exit them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's, it's shocking. Mm -hmm. I know that like mm -hmm. it's more than like 50% of small businesses. They can't even sell it for anything. Yeah. Right. So my big thing now is, is if I was going to come by my company, I am the company, yeah. right? And I want to sell this thing someday. I'll be 42 in a couple of weeks. Like I'm still at least a decade out from this. Mm -hmm. But if I am the company and I sell the company, who the hell is going to buy just that book of business when I leave? Yeah. Because I'm the reason they bought. Yeah. So I have to start this shift now and over the next 10 years, let's say, get my company to have more of a brand. I still need a personal brand just like mm -hmm. anybody does. Yeah. But like I need a team of people. I need guys on my team that, you know, can speak on a stage, mm -hmm. that can go to the convention, that can go to the networking event, that can do the things to build the brand outside of just me. Yeah. I, I don't like the chance show. It's not, it's not like, first of all, I don't, I don't like attention, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which is why I hate doing personal branding as a whole. Trust me, man, when I'm done, I'm going to disappear. Nobody will ever find yeah. me anywhere. I'm gone. <laughs> um, but that's a big shift for me. So, man, to answer your question, I haven't done it. Yeah. I haven't done it well. 
Yeah. Um, I think that's just, I think that's normal, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. I think that I'm a little late to the game with the size of my company to be mm. making this move, but mm. it's been planned. And um, I'm talking to people that have helped agencies do this. Uh, one of your guys, mm-hmm. actually, I have a call set up with next week that I asked you about. Yeah. Um, you know, this is something that I, 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 it's a 2025 thing. So we'll come back and do this podcast yeah, in about yeah, a year yeah. and a half. Yeah. And I'll tell you uh, what I did yeah. and how bad I failed. Well, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to watch the journey because like, it's, it's one that like I started to do. So we hired a sales girl. Um, uh, she was working with, with me for two years, about a year and a half. But it was still like all the leads came in for me, so it was like yeah. it was it was starting to rip the bandaid off. But it was like a very very gradual process. But I know people struggle with that so much because it's like when I was first getting started, right? I had thirty clients, and I was like I knew everything going on because I was the one pushing all the buttons and doing all that stuff. Well, then when we grew to a hundred clients in about a year and a half later. People would call me. They're like, Adam, I signed up with you. What's going on? And I don't even know where to find the stuff. Yeah. And so, like, I took that so personally. I think that was, like, part of my struggle is, like, I sold them. It's my name. It's my brand. And, yes, it's my company. But I, I, I had so much anxiety and stress. So I don't know if, like, you get that when people – or do clients still reach out to you or have you been yeah. pretty good at, like – No, no, they do. Yeah. But, man, I, I, I have gotten great at the delegation yeah. and the framing of the delegation, yeah, yeah. right? So to me, it's all about having the systems mm-hmm. to make sure you don't get yourself caught in that shit. Yeah. But second of all, it's all about setting the tone from the beginning of, yeah. hey, look, mm-hmm. like, I'm not running your account, this person and this person and this person are who your contacts are going to be. I'm all, and I always tell them, and this is the truth. I'm always happy to jump on a call. Um, if things are tough, you know, we've, the economy sucks right now, mm-hmm. right? Things are tough for a lot of small businesses, man. It almost makes me sick to my stomach when I think about it. I'm so thankful that like, we're not getting destroyed. And we did have a down this year at one point. Um, we've crawled back out of it and we're right on track again. But, um, but yeah, man, it's, it's about systems and framing the expectations from day one. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the big things like nobody should call me and expect me to know what's going on with their campaign. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> now, I do look at things from like a 30,000 foot view once a month. Yeah, I sit down with my assistant. We go through everything. I look at it. Um, Amber, who's the the gal that I told you has the, the the profit sharing agreement with me, like we'll sit down and we'll go through and like who what's struggling. That's really what I want to know more than anything else is what accounts are struggling. Yeah. And how can I help? Mm-hmm. You know. But yeah, man, those are all things that I can tell you. I probably dealt with that a long. T- it's been a long time though. <laughs> I've been removed from that. Yeah. Um, Learn pretty quickly. You just you can't do it all, and yeah. you have to trust people, which yeah. is also a hard thing in scaling. Yeah, it's hard, man. It's yeah. hard. Yeah, it definitely is. So you talk about twenty twenty five kind of being that year where you're gonna you know continue to build the personal brand, which I've already seen you do some stuff. I know you kind of talked about some things you're working on as well. What are some of the things from like a business standpoint? that you're excited about like the future of because of it. I know you've done some speaking. I know you've done some other stuff, but talk yeah. about us about like the Chan's brand outside of the company. Yeah. You know, it's something that I think I'm still evolving with right now. Like I was putting out a lot of content, then I slowed it down because I kind of hit this point where I'm like, mm, you know, that was phase one. There's a lot of this I don't like. Mm-hmm. And you know, the, the lack of engagement can get to your head too mm-hmm. on certain yeah. things. Yeah. I can post the dumbest shit in the world and it explodes and then I can post something that's actually valuable, valuable. and it's like three people <laughs> liked it in one comment. I'm like, like, you guys need to read this. Like, yeah. and, and we all know that's not all about the quality of the content. That's algorithm, algorithmic bullshit that, you know, just happens from time to time as well. And you can't, you can't let that stuff get you down, but I'm reevaluating that. But, you know, man, one thing that I did this year is I said no to speaking engagements. I have three in 2024 total because I said no. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I think you posted. I, I yeah. said no to my first like ever two speaking events this week. It felt incredible because it was like there were so many reasons why I didn't yeah. want to do it. But you 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 talked you talked to me about that at lunch, and I was just like, man, I no, need to dude. do that. It's <laughs> it's so true. You know, like you're you're a, you're a family man now. You're a yeah. dad, like. You know, I, man, I was living on airplanes, mm-hmm. and I I did get to the point where I was getting fifteen, twenty, twenty five thousand dollars to speak, and people go, "Shit, that's a lot of money." It is, but I'm away from my family for sometimes three days to do that. 
which is the same, we'll say, you know, it's people don't understand. It's not just going to speaking at the event. Yeah. It's the dinner the night before. <laughs> it's the cocktails afterwards. And, you know, first of all, I hate to say this, but like, I don't love people. I don't love socializing. And if I'm sitting at a bar that evening having a glass of bourbon and I have a single file line of 12 people waiting to talk to me, I'm not happy. Yeah. You know, and it's not like I want to help. It's not like I don't want to. I love to help people. Yeah. But. Man, it's 730. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I just prep for this thing. I just did this whole thing. I'm just trying to have a drink and go to bed. Like yeah. that's it. Yep. So that I, I don't like and, and the travel and being away from my family. So what I ended up doing is I was like getting paid that money and then I was flying private just so I could get there and mm-hmm. back the same day back to my family. Mm-hmm. And it would be a long day, you know, like 5.30 a.m. I leave and I get home at 7 o'clock at night, but at least I'm home. Yeah. So it's like I was spending, we'll say, 20 to travel back and forth, getting paid 20, then spending the 20 to come back and forth. And I'm like, yeah, I was getting exposure and leads, but I just I don't like the grind of it. And mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of people that you and I both know that have built successful careers off of being, quote, unquote, speakers. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But, man, when you have social media, you don't have to do that. Yeah. I can get to way more people in five minutes of work. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to go spend 20 grand, fly private, do all this other stuff to go get in front of 300 people when I can go get in front of tens of thousands with a post? Yeah. So that was my mindset. And it's like, you know, it's hard to walk away from the money. And, you know, I think we all like that attention to a certain extent, but not for me, man. After I I did at the beginning, then I'm like, hmm. Don't I don't like this. Yeah. It just it's not me. And it's not wrong. Yeah. It's just not me. And that's yeah. not what I want my scalability of my brand to be. Yeah. So rarely do them now. Yeah. So and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is because not only is it like, hey, this is what everybody else is doing, but it's like for me and I wrote that wrote that post yesterday, it was like the fear of missing out. Because there was that yeah, time where I was like I can see that. Whether it was because I mean, like you and I are in a lot of the same Facebook groups, like when somebody tags you in a Facebook group and then it's like, okay, like if I don't respond to them right away, they're probably going to go sign. You know, that's just what goes through my mind. We all know that's likely not a reality. And if they do go sign up with the first person that they talk to, they're probably going to be a terrible not a good client anyway. <laughs> Anyways, but that was the same mindset I had with like the speaking stuff. And so I just realized like, as I was taking inventory of this year is like, I'm going to a bunch of events. Sometimes I'm having to pay even to go speak or yeah. me pay to go and do all the travel and all the stuff. Yep. And then it's just like, okay, it's not worth it. Yep. Like the clients didn't come. The exposure could have been there. Maybe the clients did come, but it's like, okay, I knew that person already. I, I should have just like sent them a message, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's where I think most people are like, oh, no, I have to do this for the social media. I have to do this for the clients. And it's like, no. No, you don't. You don't. It's all just this It's this facade and sex appeal that's not reality. Yeah. Like, it really is. You know, like, you know how many pictures I have of me on stages with badass lights and fog machines and sh- Man, I just stopped posting it. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't – a lot of it's an ego thing. It is. You know, yeah. I've had to go through – I'll, like I said, I'll be 42 years old in a couple of weeks. I've had to go through some serious ego shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up dirt, I'm not going to say dirt poor. Like I, I never struggled to eat a meal, but mm-hmm. man, I came from nothing. Mm-hmm. Like my bedroom was in a cinder block basement of a 700 square foot house that was like 52 degrees in the winter. Mm-hmm. Like I did not come up with money mm-hmm. at all. So to me, it was a lot of like, look at me now. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've had half a dozen exotic cars. You know how many I own right now? Zero. You want to know why? Because I buy them. I put a picture of it on social media to look like a badass. And then it would sit in my garage because I'm a pickup truck guy (laughs) at the end of the day. And, and, you know, I had to go through this, like, evolution of look at me, you know, Mm. the Rolexes. And I still, I love them. I wear one right now. Like, I I love nice things. But a lot of it for me was, like, ego. And I needed to mature and grow up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't really start making what I would call, like, serious money until – Oh, what are we in 2024? So we'll say like five, six years ago, mm-hmm. like serious money, you know, mm-hmm. like crossing the, uh, like a seven figure income mark. Mm-hmm. And to me, it was like, look at me, watch this. But dude, that's such, it's such so stupid shit that if I could go back on it, like I would never do any of it. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, I felt like I had to have this car to be cool. Dude, you don't need, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, really nobody cares. Yeah. You know what I mean? Can I afford the car? Yeah. Do I need the car? No. Do I even really like the car after I drive it three times? No, <laughs> yeah. I don't. So <laughs> yeah. uh, that's awesome. Well, and like that's where I've kind of like came to this year and and like just the con even the conversation we had at lunch. Like yeah. I was just like, man, like 
you get in this tunnel vision, right, where you're around the wrong people, which we know I was, and 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 you're listening to all of it, and you think like, oh my gosh, you wake up one day and you're like, I start to have the money, I start to win the awards, I start to do all the stuff, and you're like, but for what? Yeah. And it's like the worst feeling ever because it's almost worse than not having anything at all because yeah. you're like, at least I'm chasing something. Now I've chased uh, that next thing and that next thing and the grass isn't greener. Yeah. It sucks. It, it is. I think, it, how old are you? 32. 32. So I got a decade on you. You're going to go through like, you're you're so far ahead of me. I told you this at lunch. Mm. Like guys like you make me proud. Mm. They really do. Seriously, man. Because if I had your emotional and we'll say maturity levels that you have at your age, I'd be so far ahead of where I'm at right now. Like, man, the grass is going to get greener for you. Yeah. It might be a different path now. Yeah. You might be going, you, you know, you might have hit a stop sign and had to go right or left, but yeah. you're going to be so much better off going through the shit that you've gone through and have went through at such a young age. I didn't even start my company until I was almost 30. Mm -hmm. So like, think about where you're at yeah. in an entrepreneur, you know, journey mm -hmm. compared to where I was at. Yeah. So man, like, it, it, but you're going to go through a whole nother level of it. And I think it's just part of life. And I think over the next decade, I'm going to go through a whole nother level of it now. You know, like I'm looking at a lot of things very differently now than I did just a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as like assets and saving and investing more and, you know, like my children and what that legacy looks like. I, I'm fine. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm never going to struggle. I'm never going to have to think about anything I buy for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Even if I lose half of what I have, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Um, so I, I'm at peace with that, but now it's like, how do I completely change this family trajectory forever Ever. and mm -hmm. make sure that it's protected beyond just my children? Mm -hmm. Um, these are all the things that I think about now. And, uh, you will think about that more and more and more over the next 10 years. Like yeah. you're, you're going to go through some ego shit again, mm -hmm. would be my guess. I think we all, you know, do that. I think it's just life, yeah. you know? Well, it's funny when you like sit here and like you're not really like you're like, hey, like I went from speaking and doing all that to traveling events to not going to much at all. I haven't been posting as much as on social media. And it's like you're the people I really want to be talking to. But I you end up finding yourself in these circles of people when you're a new entrepreneur yeah. because they're the ones that are all online. They're the ones that are going to all events and they're giving the worst freaking advice. Yeah. And it's like, you know, but when you find the people like yourself that have actually done it that the track records there are all these different things and then you start to have the conversations you realize what you're talking about is what more so in line with what i actually want mm -hmm. but the other people aren't talking about it because they don't have the actual track record or the money or For the sure. things to be able to go do those things yeah. and that's the hardest part is figuring out who's real and who's full of shit in today's <laughs> world man it's it's more than ever you know like everybody's been making fun of the you know the online gurus and the internet coaches forever but they're still out there. Yeah. And, you know, you just, man, you never know. Like, I'll even tell you, um, I won't I won't name it, but th there's a business group that I was involved in very early and very expensive, 50, 60 grand a year, okay, to be in it. And I know a lot of those people. There was only 60-some people in the first year. Mm -hmm. There are so many of those people that owe money to so many other people that are not making the payments, that are not helping them because their businesses are struggling. Mm -hmm. And you really start to see integrity. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, man, I, I see your Lambo. I know you owe so-and-so 150 grand. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. sell the fucking car. Yeah. Like, there's no integrity, man. Yeah. And that shit... I, I'm still like I'm actually going through it right now. Like I ha I've I've have over a hundred thousand dollars loaned out right now to people, like entrepreneurs, friends mm -hmm. that are struggling. I'm should I have honestly probably not. Yeah. Um. I've already had one be two payments late. Um. Might I not get it back? Maybe. Is it going to kill me? No. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Um. But there's just a lot of struggle out there right now, and in times like where the economy's at right now mm -hmm. and it's a struggle and businesses are hurting, you really see who's who. Yeah. Like you really see who's who. Mm -hmm. Like people get exposed in these times more than ever. Yeah. Um, but I'm still seeing that shit you're talking about. Yeah. It's like I know you owe somebody that I know money. Yeah. Like really? Yeah. You know what I mean? You're on your half a million dollar boat. Yeah. But you owe this guy money. I don't know how people do it. I there's no integrity anymore, man. Yeah. It's so hard to find well, people. Well, I've even had to like, so I had to take over the lease of my office that I shouldn't be taking over, but I'm like, I was the one that like signed up with, the, with my you know other people. 
I've had to refund people money of because it wasn't like all these different things where I'm like, I'd rather be able to sleep okay at night and know that these people know that at least my my part in it was yeah. taken care of. It's you're a good man. It's called integrity and people don't have it as much these days. It's so hard to find. Like I just back to those examples I was giving you, I can't imagine having a two, three hundred thousand dollar car <sighs> and having a loan from my friend. Yeah. Dude, like I would go dig ditches with a shovel and pay them back before yeah. I didn't pay them back. I would sell that dumbass car yeah. or boat or whatever <laughs> that nobody needs. Yeah. You know, before I would ever do that. Like yeah. I it's just it's a it, man, it's a weird time. It's Very a weird, weird time. time. The world is a lot different than where it was <laughs> even 10, 15, 20 years ago. Oh yeah. Absolutely. What's one piece of advice you would give to somebody that's just getting started in entrepreneurship? that you're like, hey, if I would have just known this yeah. going back to when I started? I'll say there's two. They have to go hand in hand. My biggest mistakes. One is you you have to find a mentor day one. Mm. So my mentors have changed over the years. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, we're in Arte. I don't consider Andy and Ed mentors. Mm. I really don't because I don't have them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they're not, they have a group. They provide a ton of value. I love them both on a human being level. Um, you know, I do talk to them a little bit outside of Arate meetups and whatever, uh, but they're not like there for me. And I don't, I wouldn't expect them to be. Yeah. When, when I signed up for that group, I didn't expect Andy to come sit down in my business with me once a quarter and mm -hmm. say, Hey chance, this is what you should do. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I waited to get a mentor too long mm. and I didn't know my numbers. Well, I wasn't a good business person. Um, and, and having somebody that's done a little bit more than you, and it doesn't have to be the same niche. Yeah. Like it, I don't need a digital marketer that's done more than me. I just need somebody in a service-based business of some sort that's yeah. further along, mm -hmm. you know, that has been through the shit that I'm going through, that knows what this looks like and can talk me off the ledge, yeah. which we know those ledges come up <laughs> All the time. every week, right? <laughs> um, so a mentor is a huge one. And the other big thing that I really, really hate is I did not have good money people early. Mm. And good money people don't work with people without money. <laughs> and that's a hard part. But I'm on my fifth accountant. Mm. And now I have a guy that manages you know, all my investment accounts, all my life insurance, but he's also a tax strategist. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't meet with my CPA without him. Mm -hmm. And they literally fight on calls about what I can ethically write off and how <laughs> I can do this to stay above water, uh, right? I'm not doing anything illegal, uh, but like pushing every limit that you can. I mean, uh, I, I can promise you I've written checks for a million dollars in taxes I shouldn't have yeah. over the years. Uh, yeah. And if I would have had those people from day one, which yeah. they wouldn't have let me work with them, I couldn't have afforded to work with them. Yeah. But if I would have got them just five years earlier than I did, mm -hmm. man, I have, you know, like if you're not taking advantage of taxes and tax law, you're 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 lighting money on fire. Yeah. Like you can feel like a great citizen handing it to the government, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Good for you. I don't support anything our government spends money yeah. on for the most part. <laughs> yeah. So I would rather keep it for myself. Yeah. Um, but that those would be the two big things that like when you're younger in your journey, you don't think about that stuff. Yeah. Um, but the mentor will change the game for you if it's the right person that cares yeah. and has done more than you have. Mm -hmm. Um and to handle your assets and your money and your tax dollars, um, you know, that million dollars sitting in my business account would be nice right now as I'm looking to go through this expansion plan in 2025. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I these people saved me half a million dollars in taxes in my first two years with them. Wow. That I would just had an accountant that was a damn bookkeeper. Yeah. That Listen, anybody that's listening to this, there is a massive difference between <laughs> a CPA mm. and a tax strategist. Yeah. A lot of CPAs talk like they know tax strategies. They don't. Yeah. Like you need somebody that's saying, do this with this vehicle, do this with this house. Yeah. You should buy this so we can do this and then we'll get this money back then. Yeah. Like if you don't have people saying that, you're you're losing money. Mm -hmm. There's a reason, you know, Trump doesn't pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, Amazon only pays ten thousand dollars because they're they're not cheating the system. If they were, they'd be nailed, trust yeah. me. <laughs> but they're using every loophole that they can and legally doing it. And that's something that you got to get a hold of ASAP. And just a damn bookkeeper and accountant that files your taxes is not that be, person. Yeah. That's great, great advice. And, uh, man, this has been an awesome episode. I really appreciate you uh, coming in here, man. Of course, man. Where can people stay connected with you and learn about your company? I mean, companies agile and co com, And, you know, the best place to find me is either on Facebook or Instagram personally. Um, I'm, I'm there 
twice a day, <laughs> uh, sometimes more, but mm-hmm. I've tried to control that because I get so many DMs and shit from people that it's like a waste of my time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do, I do check it every single day, um, at least once or twice. But that's that's the best place to find me, man. And you know, I I help way more businesses than I work with. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's kind of like my non for profit. That's not real. Yeah, <laughs> but man, like I I truly at this point. I turn away more like small businesses mm-hmm. than I take on. Yeah, um, I I am not the guy that will like go put a company in a fifteen hundred dollar month retainer because I need fifteen hundred dollars a month. Yeah, um, I have to know that I'm gonna like make something happen for them for Absolutely. that money. So I am like super overly honest. I turned away two cases yesterday alone that were just like this. The numbers don't track. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to do this. Yeah, call me when you're in a different spot. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, those are those are the best places to find me. That's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. Thank you again to our amazing title sponsor, Go High Level. Without them, we aren't able to produce the quality of content or have amazing guests like we did today with Chance. Check out a free and extended 30-day trial in the show notes. Make sure to leave us a five-star review as well, making a big push for that this year, and it definitely helps move the needle. And remember, authority isn't built overnight. It's built over time. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. We sure to appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you consume podcasts. This way you'll get notifications as new episodes become available. If you feel so inclined, please leave us a review. We sure to appreciate it. Until next time, friends.